I got James Wan on the brain. Uh, can't stop thinking about films like The Conjuring or The Conjuring 2, Saw, Insidious. I can't stop thinking about his work. But specifically those movies. Uh, Furious 7 and Aquaman, <laughs> more than serviceable, more than competent. Yeah, he did extremely well. <laughs> like, they're, like Aquaman, you know, if you're going to make an Aquaman movie, uh, you might as well commit. You might as well go all in, which, uh, which James Wan definitely did. But it's his films uh, within horror. It's films, like I said, The Conjuring, The Conjuring 2, Saw, Insidious. Uh, these are the films that... I, I can't stop thinking about lately. Like, you know when you stumble upon a director, and it's weird that I would use something like stumble upon in reference to James Wan, considering he's one of the most commercial directors that we've covered on this channel. Um, but I think I have a soft spot for commercial directors. I think that a lot of people don't um, just kind of write them off. They just say that they're popular, like, almost inherently, like, just because, and it's like, well, nothing's inherently accessible, nothing's inherently palatable or well-liked, there's a reason for it, um, just like the work I did with Tim Burton and uh, Kevin Williamson, I did a lot of analysis of those, of, of, of the works of, of those two artists, um, because they seem to be these, these two figures that are like, well, they were popular because just because and, and no one's ever popular just because uh people write them off without actually properly engaging with his work um it's, it's really fun to ask why are these um commercial filmmakers so popular and it's mostly because it speaks to a very specific part of the ethos part of our culture part of our society it speaks to the spirit of our society that's why they're part of the zeitgeist and the cultural lexicon um this, do this doesn't just happen like we can rattle all day long we can we can just go off king we can just go off about you know like antonioni and bergman and, and all sorts of people like that but what's more fascinating to me is figuring out um some of these more commercial filmmakers and why exactly they hit so hard like why did saw hit so fucking hard in 2004? Why did The Conjuring hit so fucking hard in 2013? How is it that um, one person, James Wan, was able to, um, almost exactly 10 years in between, was able to come up with the defining horror franchise of the 2000s with Saw, and then the defining horror franchise in The Conjuring? In, in the 2010s um how how was the one person able to do this i mean it, it takes um it's almost like a premonition it takes a huge amount of skill to um figure out exactly what's going to be um on the pulse of fear for that um uh, for the generation you have to almost get to it before the culture understands why you know you have to get to it before the culture knows that that's what they're afraid of before people understand you know Saw, of course, is full of uh, a few torture porn elements, um, <laughs> um, found media elements, too. We have to remember the, these people are finding um, tapes uh, and having to play them. Um, it's also playing into, uh, it's kind of like a precursor to The Walking Dead being so popular because often these games devolve into uh, dog-eat-dog, man-versus-man. Um, it devolves into that. It plays on the selfish qualities of, of human beings post 9-11 and the voyeuristic qualities we have with uh with morbid absolutism which is kind of taking torture porn to at least its most poetic um limitation its most poetic extreme i think it's probably the best example of it uh the conjuring is something so wild and i still haven't been able to completely figure it out um because as as I've said in the videos that I've made on the first two Conjuring films, um, <laughs> it's wild because you're always aware of the composition because James Wan is there like as a spectral figure. We have all of these um, steady cam shots, all of these long tracking shots, long takes, architectural dishonesties, spatial impossibilities, multiple hallways being built just to provide you with one small sequential scare. And you're always aware of it. You're always aware that there is some sort of fucking composition being done here. You're always aware of that. Just get out of here, Lou. You're always aware that that there is a director, that there is an um, architect, that there is a grand design. 
Holy shit. This is real time. This is why I like not coming up with, with scripts half the time, but holy shit. Let, let's go beyond postmodernism, go beyond meta. Because the Conjuring films, um, I think what's also coming back is religion. <laughs> I think that's kind of, that's becoming a trend again. Um, because we've we've deconstructed God to the point that it's moved beyond uh, um, satire, irony, post-irony, but now we're in a new sincerity. So if he's always there as this omnipotent, omnipresent figure, if James Wan is always there, the fear of the conjuring is the fear of God. Because we're always aware of the conjuring's design, right? We're always aware of the, of the director. And for a film, for the fantastical universe that any film provides you with, that is... God. The director is God. <laughs> what the fuck did I just say? That's Oh, that's a <laughs> that's fucking a good theory, Zach. Okay. All right. No, I'm I didn't <laughs> I didn't like come up prep for that before I went on here. But hey, I just figured out the conjuring. And that's fucking insane that that's what it is. Oh my god, I've been, I've been getting closer and closer to it. And that's what The Conjuring is, it's the fear of God. Because um, all horror films have to be kind of like, not cautionary tales, or not like kind of conservative. They have to kind of shame you, you know, like not kink shame, but virtue shame you. <laughs> shame you for the virtues that you are reaching. Shame you for the sincere things that you are trying to embark on, you know. I mean, hell, insidious is shaming you for children. Like, The Conjuring, I think, is shaming you for belief, and I think it's ahead of its game. I know, uh, not ahead, of, it's, it's where exactly it needs to be. Because it was before, I think, that religion and neo-Christianity, or whatever the fuck is going on right now, um, has, has been coming back. And it has been coming back. Um, spiritual thought is, um, like, far more acceptable now than it was in the 2000s. Um... Not that it was ever unacceptable. That, that that's never been the case. But um, people uh, people who would otherwise be incredibly cynical, skeptical, and um, kind of uninterested in uh, religious thought are now at least um, entertaining uh, the artistic notions of it because our films seem to be not only sexless but godless and <laughs> gone so far without without one or the other and they're, they're choosing god over sex so that's like where we are now in films is uh trying to approach um the idea of a mostly um kind of mystical or christian god um a mystical christ like mystical christianity like a new neo-christianity what the fuck ever we're approaching christianity with a new sincerity in film um i think that's absolutely it and I think The Conjuring is playing with that, because The Conjuring is making you completely aware of, of an existence of, of an unseen um, architect, an unseen arbiter. Uh, it's making you completely aware that James Wan is a director, that you are watching something contrived, controlled, theatrical, cinematic, something that is manipulated. And it is making you uh, come to terms with, with, with all of those philosophical quandaries that go involved with with believing. It makes you afraid of God because it distances you from the design, because most horror movies are about immersing you into the film. The Conjuring has this compositional distance because it is so deliberately orchestrated, and it's distancing you from that design. So you are not involved in the grand design, The Conjuring. <laughs> oh my god, James Wan. That's fucking intense, dude. That's intense. No, I, I, this video was supposed to... I don't really know what it was supposed to be. I was just gonna, like... I guess I did wax poetic on James Wan, but I was more so just going to be like, isn't he awesome, guys? Isn't he great? Rather than have an epiphany um mid video but i mean that's preferable trust me that's preferable um i, I think james wan is an incredible director he's um as i said at the very beginning and i think i got sidetracked by like life-changing existential epiphanies um through the conjuring was um you know you stumble upon a filmmaker 
And then I said, it's weird how you, I say stumble upon because he's so commercial. It's like I had to actively avoid him for so long um, in order to stumble upon him later on. Um, when you stumble upon a filmmaker who seems to completely blow your mind, completely like wrap you around um, his or her finger, their finger, and no, like, <laughs> and intrigue you mystify you like that's what james wan is to me right now an enigma like the dude's talent is so unreal i'm having a hard time comprehending it you know i mean i i just put on saw um for the for the first time in years and by the way saw is a defining film of my youth it came out when i was like 14 it came out in 2004 and everyone was talking about it. You want to talk about the movie that like middle school kids and high school kids are talking about? It was Saw. It was that franchise, but it was specifically the first one. I remember when it came out, it was like, oh, man, have you seen Saw yet? Have you fucking seen this movie? What, what would you have done? Oh my God, would you be able to live? Oh, oh Jesus Christ, that twist. Like that was probably, um, apart from the sixth sense, that's the twist of my youth that people talked about endlessly, you know, and saw lives up to its name and saw is so energetic and there's so much fucking greatness to saw oh man i'm happy that that's like the horror movie that that truly shaped me because like you know scream and kevin williamson works those are my favorite ones and i did grow up watching those all the time but i grew up watching those all the time on vhs uh, they weren't necessarily made for me Saw, <laughs> that was made for me. You know, Hostel, that was made for me. Um, I do prefer the postmodern films before, um, before we got to the return to form or eventually torture porn. I do prefer the postmodern films of The Faculty and Urban Legend. And I know we did last summer. I do prefer those. But I am happy in a way that, like, I have so many fond memories of just the concept of Saw. Um, like when I watch it, I remember conversations I have with people I haven't thought about in decades. Um, just, yeah, or, you know, 15 years, maybe not decades, maybe I'm not that old. But I remember these ghosts of my past and we're just sitting there talking about Saw and about if we'd be able to cut off our own limbs. If we could actually do it. I remember the kids who were grossed out by the movie and kind of repulsed. And I remember feeling like so much, oh, you can't handle it. Remember the earliest talks I had about the concept of horror itself were because of James Wan, because of Saw. That's cool. Oh, I'm sorry, that Conjuring revelation earlier fucking <laughs> kicked my ass. Mm. Well, I mean, I'm Zachary, the cult boyfriend of FilmTube. Shit. This video didn't go according to plan in the best possible way. So, like the video, leave a comment. What do you think of James Wan? Um, what do you think of Saw? What do you think of The Conjuring? What do you think of Insidious? What do you think of uh, <laughs> The Fast and the Furious 7? What do you think of Aquaman? Um, what do you think of James Wan? I think he's outrageous. Outrageously complicated. And I think he's way too smart for mainstream audiences and even smarter. Um, even He's too smart for mainstream audiences and cinephiles are, are, are too dim to even come close to what James Wan is providing. Because they're so quick to write off any one mainstream. Which is weird considering like mainstream is... To, to me, pretty subjective. If you spend most of your time railing against the likes of James Wan or Tim Burton or whatever, but you and all of your acolytes just run around talking about whatever the Criterion Collection is simping over at the time, you're just as bad. You just have a different accepted canon. You just have a different um, acceptance of what mainstream is. Because to me, like from my perspective and from where, I've, where I'm coming from, um, it'd be mainstream of me to to talk about Fellini you know that would be the mainstream choice for the kind of channel that I have and that's why I like looking at these commercial people because 
that are brilliant. A lot of them are brilliant, or a lot of them are at least way more complicated than people think, because no one's engaged with their work properly. And James Wan is definitely one of those people, one of those incredibly mainstream artists who has not been deciphered yet, who has not been fully understood um, by the cinema elite, by film critics, or by normies, hasn't been understood by any of them. I'm changing that. James Wan is a fucking master. One of my faves right now. I can't, I can't get some of his work out of my head. Parts of his movies, just moments, frames, elements. <sighs> can't describe it. <laughs> I was gonna try. I can't describe it. James Wan. Cult boyfriend. Thanks for watching.